Hello students, today we are going to learn something new that is how a sliding mesh gearbox works and we will learn the principle of sliding mesh gearbox and by the help of easy diagrams and animations we will learn it in a lucid way. Okay, so I will like to show you my slides first so that you will judge that you will be able to learn something or not by the help of this lecture. Okay, so first of all, what you are going to learn the principles of sliding mesh gearbox by animation and we will learn the three gear systems, okay, with reverse gears and indicative diagrams are used for easy understanding, okay. So, we will talk about the basics, okay. See, the power delivered by the crankshaft of an engine is constant at a particular RPM. Remember this thing, that at a particular RPM in case power is coming out, then uh, it is of particular magnitude, okay. So, the power of crankshaft is given by the product of torque at the crankshaft and the angular velocity means power equals to torque of crankshaft into, into angular velocity. Keep in mind, okay. When the vehicle is stationary, then to make it just move, high torque is required compared to that of angular velocity. Means we want just the vehicle come in motion, okay, to gain some momentum. So, in that case, high amount of rotational effort is required to spin the wheels. So, high torque is required compared to that of angular velocity. But when the vehicle gains momentum, then angular velocity is more required compared to that of torque. For example, the final gear, okay, in final gear, the speed of vehicle is high, however, not that much torque is there on the wheels, okay. Now, to customize the torque and angular velocity, gearbox is used, okay. So, the power of engine is fed to a gearbox. So, when it is fed to a gearbox, there will be output of gearbox. So, at the output by shifting the gear, you can change the torque and omega. Either you can gain higher torque and reduce omega or lower torque and higher omega like this. And remember one thing that in case a small size gear drives a big size gear, then at the big size gear, higher torque is obtained. However, the omega is reduced. Similarly, in case a bigger size gear drives a smaller size gear, then at the smaller size gear, lower torque is obtained. However, omega will be high. Okay. So, here this is the schematic diagram, indicative diagram of a sliding mesh gearbox. You can see. So, these are the legends. So, this is the engine shaft and engine shaft is connected to a uh, engine fixed gear you can see and this is meshing up with the lay shaft gear this is the lay shaft red colored okay so this gear uh, is meshing with this lay shaft gear and this is a side view of the gear remember this thing in case you are taking the front view then you will observe round gears this is the side view okay so when the power comes to the lay shaft then it reaches to these two gears which are fixed on this lay shaft rigidly fixed on this lay shaft okay and you can see this is a spline shaft, okay, spline shaft uh, and these are the driven gears, okay. So, the type of fit of these driven gears with this spline shaft is like this over here I have shown. So, this is in case you are taking the cut section of this spline shaft, then it is sort of gear, means you can assume it spline shaft is a long, long, axially long gear, which have teeth, long teeth, okay. And over it you can see this is a driven gear, green color. So, you can see that it is complementary fit on this spline shaft you can see the type of it so this driven gear can slide on this spline shaft okay however in case this driven gear is made to spin it will force that spline shaft to spin also because the fit is of that kind you can see over here so these driven gears can slide on this spline shaft but in case these driven gears are spin they will spin the spline shaft also and you can see these are the links and these are the forks by the help of which we can slide these gears okay and you can see this is the dog clutch also that you will understand later okay so let's start suppose the power from the engine is fed to this engine shaft so it goes to this uh, green colored gear which is the engine shaft fixed gear from there it is going to this lay shaft gear which is meshing with this engine shaft gear okay and ultimately power is going to these two gears however it is not reaching to this spline shaft the ultimate power is obtained at the spline shaft means customized torque and omega that will be obtained at this spline shaft which is the driven shaft you can assume okay so let's start right now no power is coming to this spline shaft so shift the gear right now it is neutral so in case we are shifting the gears toward right so what will happen like this so gear is shifted so what do you see that this driver gear of this lay shaft is mashing up with this driven gear so it will start spinning driven gear 
and in turn it will start spinning the spline shaft also because i told you the type of it like this means in case d1 gear spins it will spin the spline shaft also okay so the power starts coming out so you can see over here that the driver gear of this lay shaft is of smaller size compared to that of this driven gear so high torque will be obtained however omega will be reduced now we will take the second gear so shift it toward left so like this so now this gear this driven gear is meshing up with this gear so you can see that the driver gear is of bigger size compared to that of driven gear so uh, ultimately from this driven gear the power goes to the spline shaft and it is coming out from here so in this case what will happen that high amount of omega will come out however torque will be reduced okay now the third gear so we have to make it neutral first of all then shift it to our top like this and ultimately the gear lever is connected with this link connect the dock clutch so dock clutch can also slide on this spline shaft so what will happen the dock clutch teeth will mesh up with this engine shaft dock clutch teeth okay so in this case what will happen whatever power which is fed to this engine shaft will directly go to the spline shaft lay shaft is idle it is spinning however spinning idly okay so directly the engine power is fed to this spline shaft so power is coming out so highest amount of omega will come out however the torque will be reduced okay now we'll talk about the reverse gear in reverse gear what will happen one more gear will be there this is the driven reverse gear and this is the driver reverse gear red color which is on the lay shaft however in between there is idler gear also so we know this thing that in case two gears are meshing up then one gear spins clockwise then other spins in opposite direction anti-clockwise so from this driver shaft you can see this idler gear is meshing up so if this driver gear is spinning clockwise idler gear will spin in anti-clockwise direction so in case we shift the gear toward right in case shifting toward right like this so what will happen the motion will start of this driven gear but in opposite directions so the spline shaft will start moving in opposite direction okay so hope by this small lecture you would have understood that how this sliding mesh gearbox works thank you